So this talk is about the basics of compilation. So I will not talk about any building systems like, like make and you know, CMake and whatever the pack building systems you use. But I will only talk about the compile and link line and how you take care of those on Cori. So this is the Cori system configuration. It is Cray XC40. And uh, in general, what you, um, you can just think of uh, KNL has a lot of more uh, weaker cores in comparison to Haswell processors, but they are also, they are both Intel processors. So in the context of compilation, uh, one thing you need to remember is KNL supports more instruction, extended instruction sets. So if you build binary that optimized for Haswell uh, architecture, it may run, it, it runs on KNL, but not vice versa. So um, you need to remember this. So in general, for the optimal performance, uh, we recommend you to build separate binaries for each uh, type of processors. So I will go through, I will use several slides to go through the general thing you need to know about compilation on Cori. So we have three supported program environments. So they are Intel, GNU, and Cray. So uh, here among these three, we have Intel uh, as a default. <coughs> so by programming environment, we uh, mainly means the compilers and the libraries uh, that that are built with uh, matching compilers. So Cray actually did a lot of work to pack these things together and to provide a user-friendly uh, program environments. And they provide so-called compiler wrappers, something called FTN, CC, and C, capital CC for Fortran and C and C++ compilers, respectively. So the, the compiler wrappers interact with the modules loaded in your environment and take care of many things uh, for compilation. So your task of compilation uh, is very easy. So one thing I want to mention is um, if you use compiler wrappers, those uh, include paths and also libraries can be taken care of automatically. And uh, uh, we need to know if we use com uh, compiler wrappers to compile, we are doing cross compilation. This means you log into Cori login nodes, those are Haswell nodes, and then you compile for computer nodes. So as we uh, talked earlier, um, we have uh, two types of computer nodes, so Haswell and KNL. So by default, uh, if you log into Cori login nodes, you can see Cray PE Haswell module is loaded. So if you don't do anything, use a compiler wrappers to, co to build a binary that is optimized for Haswell. Okay, so this is the environment uh, you see when you log into Cori. So you can see uh, Cray PE Haswell is loaded. And then also you can see this um, uh, PRGEMV dash Intel. This is a program environment module. So for three supported modules, we have corresponding uh, modules available. So you can also see the Intel module is loaded. So your default is Intel program environment. So to compile for Cori as well, that's easy. So let's say this is just a demo. So you have just a single source code there. And then you use FTN. This is a Fortran compiler wrapper. So you use that to compile. And you got A dot out. You just run it on the computer node later. We will cover this uh, in next talk. But uh, compilation is that easy. You just uh, you don't have to worry about to provide the, the libraries and headers and those things. But you will see like uh, what's entered in this compilation line. But anyway, uh, the the simple, I mean, the easiest thing is just to use the wrappers and compile your code. And if you want to use GNU compiler, you just, before you compile, you just run this module swap, this program environment module, then you will use GNU compiler and all the libraries that, that were built with GNU compiler. So that's um, what we do on 
ha has well. So one thing I want to mention, some users, uh, we had some users confused. They thought these uh, compiler wrappers, these FTN, CC, and CC are Cray compilers, but they are not. So they just wrappers to, I mean, they wrap those native compilers. They can wrap Intel, GNU, and Cray compilers. They self, they are just wrappers. So they are not equal to Cray compilers. So to compile for Cori KNL, um, all you need to do is before uh, compile compilation, you just swap this Cray PE Haswell to Cray PE dash Mike KNL. So if you do this, then the KNL architecture specific uh, compiler flags will enter your compilation line automatically. So you build binary like this, then that one will be optimal for KNL. So if I have only just uh, uh, these few minutes, then yeah, it is all about how to compile on Cori. But we can extend a little bit, um, just to talk about more what you, I mean, can help you, um, help you to you know, understand better. So now I come to that compile link line. So from there, the first one is you need to choose compilers. So regarding which compiler is the best for you, you need to um, do experiment and do benchmark by yourself using your application. You need to run, you need to take, uh, choose by yourself. So in general, Intel, if you choose to use Intel compiler, then you have a better chance uh, to get the process specific optimization. So this is Intel processors. They, you can <coughs> imagine like they must have done better job to optimize, uh, you know, code for their own, you know, processors. So this is understandable, especially for the newer processor type, something like KNL here. Uh, you can think that what Intel might be, might be, uh, have done better job. And then if you want to use Cray compiler, many new features, this is very um, up-to-date features. Um, I mean, it's, it's good to have many up-to-date new features and also a lot of optimizations. So especially Cray is strong with their uh, Fortran compilers. So uh, you can try this Cray compiler if you um, uh, care to explore the compilers. And then GNU compiler is a free software. So you can see many uh, the open software they packaged with GNU compiler. So our recommendation is just to start with the compilers, uh, whatever used by the vendors or the, the code developers. That way you will uh, minimize the chance to run into compiler or code bugs because uh, developers may, you know, may not test every compiler, so it's a better it's better for you to get started with their I mean the compilers they used. Regarding the compiler flags, so you can check uh, each compiler's main page, something like you can do man I thought this is for Intel Fortran compiler. You can find uh, so many compiler flags including including those optimization flags. But uh, my recommendation is just to go with the default. Uh, so let's say you are new to our system and you want to compile some code, you should be more conservative because you don't know, uh, you know, usually like if you go with a higher optimization, there is more chance some bugs get involved, I mean introduced. So go with the default, which I believe is uh, more extensively tested and then something like Intel, its default optimization level is uh, minus O2, O2 level of optimization. And uh, um, Cray is also, they claim O2, but they are a little bit higher than O2, somewhere in between O2 and O3 level. And then GNU, you need to provide minus O2 uh, manually uh, because by default, they don't put any optimization flag. So you need to put this. And then for the open MP code, you need to um, provide this flag uh, for Intel, something like a Q open MP, you need to put there. And uh, I want to recommend this verbose option. So each compiler, they support the verbose option and they provide a lot of information under the hood, what the compiler 
uh, does for you. So it is a very good thing to, to put there to learn what the compiler does under the hood. So usually, uh, regarding using what the compiler flags is good, especially the optimization flags, um, I just uh, recommend go a more conservative side and then do the validity check first. Once you are comfortable this thing uh, generate the correct result, then you can explore more higher compiler optimizations. So one thing I want to remind you is the default behavior of compilers could be different. Especially one example here is the default number of open MP threads used by the uh, different uh, binaries, uh, by, by the, you know, uh, different compilers are different. So something like GNU and some compilers like GNU and, and uh, Intel, they just, let's say you uh, build one binary called a.out and then run it just to say a.out. You didn't specify, if you don't specify the open MP number of threads, by default, it would use all the CPU, slab, uh, CPU slots it can drift into. So in general, uh, let's say on login node, you can try this too. You, you build something and run it. It will grab all the cores available on the, on the login nodes. So uh, the default is different. Like a Cray compiler, it just default to use only one open MP threads. Okay, so that's compiler flags. So next, let's do the, um, let's look at the how to take care of this header and the library paths and also the libraries. So in general, I suppose you're all familiar with how you do manually. So manually, you invoke native compiler call and then use minus um, I, capital I, and then put the pass to the headers and then use minus capital L, and then you put pass to the libraries, and then use minus L, provide the library file name there. So this is general practice. You need to do this um, uh, manually in, in if no, like a create, if, if there is no nicely packaged the environment support there. So that's the manual way. But on create system, on Cori, we can do it automatically, and then uh, provided you have to use their Cray uh, wrappers, the FTN, CC, and capital CC. That way, this uh, header and the library paths and also libraries can be uh, taken care of automatically. So you don't have to bother with provide those by yourself. So I will uh, use the next few slides to talk about compiler wrappers. So, um, so as I said, the compiler wrappers, they wrap native compiler call and then do many things for you. So uh, depending on the, envi in the, in the environment, what kind of modules loaded. So it will uh, pick up the, I mean the libraries and those passes automatically from your environment and then put them in your compile link line. So uh, one thing we need to uh, know is I mentioned this, but it does uh, cross compilation. So I want to mention a couple of things. So uh, if from the login node, has, which is Haswell node, and then you compile for uh, another computer node, the Haswell computer node, it's uh, not, in, indeed, it's not a uh, matter, it's just doing, uh, it's just like you, you build on that node, it's fine. But if you build for KNL, then some of the packages, they, their configure script, usually they do like a compiler check. They try to see um, if your compiler works or not. So the way they do this is they just um, build a small binary and then run it on the host machine that you are, you are you know, uh, type compilation you are compiling on and then see if that binary runs, then it say, okay, compiler works. So many configure script does this, but for the cross compilation, as I mentioned earlier, the KNL binary will not run on Haswell. So it will fail the, the compiler check. So in that case, you can try this host uh, equal to some like a general uh, pr processor type here. That way you can get around that, walk around work around that error, but some packages doesn't support this option. In that case, you may want to go onto the computer node and compile. 
In that case, you can just grab one node, uh, use the C-alloc, and then compile on the KNL node. So compiler wrappers link uh, statically by default. This is a crazy preference because they are better uh, for code performance at scale. Uh, but uh, we may change, I mean, we will be, um, Cori system will be upgraded to uh, another OS in end of July. And by that time, the default will be changed, will, will set to dynamic. But still now, we are build um, binaries by default, they will be linked statically. So if you want to uh, build dynamic, uh, if you want to link your application dynamically, then you need to provide this option, minus dynamic option, in your compile link line. Or you can use this environment variable, set this, and then you don't have to change the compile link line. Uh, one thing uh, I want to mention is if you run your code at scale, like use a lot of processors, then the dynamically linked library uh, binaries may take time to load up your uh, library, shared libraries, so it may be um, have some performance hit. So we recommend for those large scale run, you should choose a static build. So we can take a look what the compiler wrapper does for you. So it does, uh, first it adds like this architecture specific flag for you, so you don't have to manually provide this to build optimized binary. And then additionally, it adds that uh, headers uh, pass and the library passes in the compile link line and automatically also put the libraries on, on them. And also the good part is it does a lot of things for you, but if you want to overwrite what it, what it does, then you can provide user option there. Then this one would take precedence. So I, I want to just provide a verbose output from the compiler wrappers. So uh, I really like this uh, because it tells you a lot of information and you can learn a lot from this verbose output. So this is the example, like I log into Cori and then I didn't do anything. I want to compile a, a small code that uses DZM um, library call. Then I just do FTN and minus V and then my source code. It gives me a lot of information and then it tells me what kind of libraries are linked into. So you can see those minus capital L, those are the passes where the uh, libraries get searched and then all the minus L thing is the libraries enter your link line. And then I put this small linker option here, WL and comma, y, dzm, underscore. This is a useful option when you have multiple options. Let's say our default, by default, we load create libside library, which provides dzm uh, function inside. So sometimes you may want to overwrite that. You want to use MKL, but you don't know exactly the code indeed used MKL or used libside. Then you can just put this option there and then you can uh, find, you can see the down below, you can see it's covered here. But it tells you where the definition come from. So in this case, it tells you the DZM come from this lib side because I didn't do anything. But if you want to overwrite that, use something like MKL option, then it, it will tell you it come from uh, MKL. Okay, so, um, now then, uh, I think I talked about the compiler wrappers, then we can talk about the available libraries. So if you log into um, Cori and type module avail, you see really tons of, uh, literally <laughs> really tons of uh, the modules and, and available, and many of them are Cray provided libraries. So how you tell it's a, uh, and NERSC staff also support a lot, so you can tell which ones are provided by Cray and which ones provided by NERSC staff. When you type module avail, you see if those module files come from this OPT Cray, this type of a path, then those are provided by Cray. And if you see the modules come from slash user slash common, those are NERSC staff 
supported libraries. Okay, so uh, uh, sometimes users need to know like where those libraries are installed. Then you can just follow steps here. You do module show and module name, and then it will tell you the installation path. So in this case, take this create and pitch example. You see module show create and pitch. You see a lot of output. Basically, it tells you what this module uh, defines or what this module does. And inside, you can find this uh, create and pitch dir. This is the directory where the module, uh, this library is installed. And then you ls that to installation directory, you can find the include path, and you can see include and the lib directories. So you further ls to that lib directory, you can see all the library files, and then also ls that include directory, you see all the headers there. So this is how you figure out where the libraries and header files are. So in case you need to manually provide these paths to your configure script, then you can try this way. And then uh, next uh, a few examples will be uh, uh, telling you how to link to the specific library. These are the examples. I included more than enough to here. Uh, try to show you how to link to those commonly used libraries. So for example, if you want to use Cray MPI and Cray LibSci, those are already loaded uh, by default. So if your code, let's say I put this parallel hello here, but uh, let's say inside I use like um, a scale LaPack and whatever, those uh, blast routines and those are provided by Cray LibSci. Then I just uh, go there and then um, sorry, just to compile. Then it will automatically link to MPI library and also create libsci. And if you want to use this HDF and netcdf library, you just say module load create uh, the dash HDF5 and then just to compile. Then the, the IO HDF5 libraries will be automatically linked into. And then this is another example like PETC and FFTW. Uh, basically, it's just all you need is just to load the module and then compile. Just the compiler invocation, you use the wrapper and then the source code. And then this is an example on how you use NERSC provided library modules. So some of the NERSC modules actually uh, follow the create uh, convention then they can interact with the wrappers. So you don't have, you, do, you can do the same thing. Something like ALPA, this is a uh, NERSC provided library, but you load that and then you don't have to manually take care of the library thing here, but it will do it automatically for you. Sorry, this thing is very sensitive to the touch, uh, sorry. And then the way you tell if NERSC provided the module, um, can do this automatically or not is you just look at the module show uh, module names output and just look for this pkg config lives. There are these three environment variables in red. You look for them. If they are defined, then those modules uh, interact with the create wrappers so you don't have to take care in the command line, uh, in your compile link line. But m many of the NERSC provided module file, it doesn't uh, follow the, uh, don't follow the create convention. So you need to explicitly provide uh, those headers and, and paths and libraries. But usually for your convenience, we provide environment variables, something like GSL you see here. You load the module, then this environment variable is defined which expands as this. It has included paths, library paths, and also the library names. So something like MKL, we recommend you go to the linking, uh, link line advisor that Intel provides. Or you can just, uh, if you use Intel compiler, you can just uh, use this minus MKL uh, compile link line uh, option. So you put that, that flag, then it can automatically link to the uh, MKL library. Again, you can use this uh, verbose option, see what is the name, what are the libraries included in your build if you use this flag. 
So for, for GNU compiler, if you want to use MKL, you need to um, give this path where the library is. But the easiest thing is you can save this environment variable called MKL root and then use it uh, and provide these libraries explicitly. Okay, uh, so as a summary, uh, I think uh, we can mention uh, three compilers sub program environments are supported and then uh, use compiler wrappers whenever possible, you know, wherever possible. This is an important message, so I read it and also made it bold. So this is actually the most important message of my talk. So whenever possible, just to use compiler wrappers that make your life is much easier. Okay, and then to compile for KNL, one more step, you need to swap this create PE dash uh, as well to Mike KNL. And then you can use, uh, man, I mean many libraries are available and then you can uh, use them. And if you use compiler wrappers and use create provided libraries, that's very easy, just to load and then you compile. And then um, to link dynamically, for now you need to provide this dynamic option or you need to set this link, um, uh, link cre uh, create PE link type dynamic option there. You need to set that. And then another important message of my talk is learn uh, from compiler verbose output. So this is uh, where you know you can learn a lot of information about compilers. So I strongly recommend this. And then recommend readings. I would like to, in addition to the uh, NERSC website, I strongly recommend to get familiar with uh, reading um, compiler man pages. You can learn a lot from them and actually many things, almost all things you can come from the compiler man page. And then also sometimes you, you would like to read this uh, linker man page. Uh, those are also very useful. Uh, before I end the um, talk, I have uh, just a short test. So if I say create compiler wrappers are create compilers, is it correct? Not, not completely. Right. So I just want to make distinction. Create compiler wrappers, it's just a wrapper. And then under the hood, they can call different compilers. They, they can call Intel, GNU, and Craze, Create compiler, right? So I just want to make sure you have this knowledge and then you can comfortably switch between compilers and compile on Cori. Uh, thank you for your attention, so I'm done. Mm -hmm.